don't have any beer, just brunch. Yeah. <laughs> my brother-in-law reserved it there, and that's where that's where we went. So nice to uh, get out and hope you did something good for your mom or your wife, who's the mother of your children. Bill, good morning to you. Good morning. Good to see you. Glad to be here. New York Times bestselling panicked author John Gilstrap. John, good morning. Great to have you here. Instead of writing a book like you're supposed to be doing, that, come, <laughs> that comes later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's uh, mono e mono. Two men go into the cage. One comes out. Finally, time to settle the score. Army or Navy, Air Guard or Navy. The Admiral versus the General. We got it all right here. <laughs> and no holds barred, baby. Well, wait, it's a star-throwing kind yeah. of The door locks you know, from the outside. <laughs> there you go. I, I'm glad you did not mention Ben with clothes today. The General looks very, very, very sharp. Gail Strap and I look less so. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> the I remember the last time I talked with you, uh, uh, the, the two co-hosts were wearing cufflinks, so I yeah. said, I'm going to wear yeah. some cufflinks well, today. You stepped you up look, your game. You, you did. <laughs> today. That's right. You got the links on. That's right. Very nice. Are they anything specific? These are Air Force Academy uh, crest cufflinks. So Very I, nice. I, I left the motorcycle ones back at, the, at my place. So. Did you leave the motorcycle back at your place, I too? I sure did. I, I, I'm getting new wheels put on. I'll show you what they look like later. But it, It's going to look like... The bat cycle. Oh, that cool. Finish with it. Very nice. Uh, where are you uh, today, and uh, how are you concluding your final two days on the campaign, Joe? Uh, well, uh, uh, we're going to be knocking doors all throughout uh, Berkeley County, and uh, also have some some folks who are vets down in Jefferson County knocking doors mm -hmm. for me, and, I, and, I, and I'll probably go down there as well uh, because I want some of the people to hear what I have to say from my mouth, and. Uh, Right now, we're putting up some more signs, and uh, I'll be making some phone calls and just trying to prepare for what we, the air tasking order for tomorrow's battle. General Chris Mookie Walker, our guest here, running for Congress. This is uh, the Alex Mooney seat that uh, he is vacating to run uh, against Jim Justice for the Senate seat that Joe Manchin is vacating because he's retiring from that, Bill. Yeah, you mentioned phone calls. I hope they're not robocalls. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, if anybody making robocalls, if I get robocalls, I hang up right away. So that that's a waste of time. People have to hear my voice. Yeah, and I think uh, we heard a lot of robocalls in previous uh, elections, but I have not heard any this year. I just wonder if the pushback has been so dramatic that people are staying away from robocalls. I think that they just weren't effective, and it was a waste yeah, of their money. Yeah. How do you see the race going, General? It's uh, where, as Rob says, within uh, the— day before the, the actual voting? Well, I, I, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, something has to be shaking things up because just last week a, a large injection of money came in uh, for one of the candidates, and that, and that usually doesn't happen unless they think that uh, they need to do that kind of thing. Now you're talking about in your race? Not in my race. Okay. <laughs> a lot of money came in from one of the other races. Correct. Was or, the, or, or, one of the other, uh, one of my competitors. Oh, one of your competitors. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Gilstrap. General, you knock on somebody's door and after the high, how are you? What is, what, what do people lead with? What is their number one complaint? What do they want you to fix? What's the first thing you hear about that people want you to fix? The economy. <laughs> Holy smokes. That's uh, it. That's uh, it. Uh, the, uh, the vast majority of people are saying uh, everything's too expensive. Uh, they, they have to decide whether they're going to fill up their gas tank or they're going to get groceries. And uh, that affects a lot of West Virginians. Now, there are some very wealthy West Virginians who are, aren't seeing that because they don't even know what milk costs. Because, uh, but, but, they, but most West Virginians know exactly how much milk, butter, eggs, Here's a big costs. district. Oh, yes. But what, as a representative, can you do about that? First thing is, I, I think, is helping to unleash West Virginia's energy. Okay, that is the way our state can actually make money and get rich. Trying to rely on congressional members or senators sending pork in is, 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 is getting less and less now. What we have to do is make West Virginia self-reliant with our coal, gas, and oil. 
and then we will have money to build up our infrastructure, uh, whether it be roads, whether it be communications. We'll have money for education. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, um, once we build up that infrastructure, more uh, industry will come to West Virginia. But it has to start with our energy. If we keep waiting for, for money from Congress, ju that's, that's really not going to work. But there's a lot, of, a lot of campaign ads, a lot of pushback about how the federal government has restricted our energy. Give me examples of where that's been the case. Well, uh, uh, Biden has pretty much uh, tightened the spigot on on our on our all of our mineral exploration here at West Virginia, uh, uh, and and the the EPA is is going to be strangling any attempt to to utilize coal and and try to strangle it even more, and and those are the you know unelected. Uh, folks in Washington who are doing that. But again, in Congress, we can say, hey, you can't do that. We make the laws, and we can work with the new administration also to uh, detangle what the EPA is doing. But the Supreme Court's already pulled back a lot of the EPA's authority. Uh, authority. Yes, but that, that doesn't mean they don't keep scratching to get their way. Okay. Uh, a, a, a lot of West Virginians mm -hmm. complain about that, too. Mm -hmm especially those with mineral rights. As a lifelong Republican, I get so frustrated watching what's going on in Washington right now where the Republican majority in the House has squandered a year and a half with infighting, where <sighs> just very little gets done because they're throwing bombs at, at each other. What do you do as a member of that new, a junior member of the House of Representatives? How do you help to calm those waters and bring a spirit of cooperation back to the House? That's where leadership comes in. That's when you know how to talk to folks. Uh, I, I've, uh, in 40 years, I've talked with firebrands and, and uh, gentle people all across the spectrum in the military, but we get them to work together because we, if you have the leadership qualities, you can get them to see a common goal and get them to put, a, put aside their differences at least to, to accomplish that mission. And that's what leadership does. Uh, if you just go in there and pick a side, nothing's ever gonna happen. You're gonna have to get in there and bring everybody together. People who don't know how to talk to people are not gonna get that done. By infighting, John, you're also referring to the constant efforts to remove speakers. Mm -hmm. Well, it certainly oh, starts yes. there. That, that, that squandered months of time. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm of the mind, okay, Democrats, ever since Nancy Pelosi uh, became their leader, they always lock arms. They might argue behind closed doors, but when the doors open, they're of one mind. Yeah. That's the same thing that the GOP needs to be doing. Yes, have, have very vigorous debates behind the closed doors, but when we open the doors, if we go as a fist, we will beat. Yeah, you say what you want about Nancy Pelosi. She was an outstanding speaker. Yep. Yeah. Well, she, you didn't hear much about AOC and uh, the rest of her crowd once uh, Nancy Pelosi put her nope. fist down, right? That's right. She put her foot on the necks. Right. General, uh, let's talk about the southern border. Uh, you have mentioned this in your ads oh, on Lord. numerous occasions. So tell me what you're, uh, as a congressman, what your plans would be to fix it. Well, just like back in 2006 when I was running the Operation Jumpstart and we were augmenting the Border Patrol, uh, my plan is to stop talking to think tanks, stop, stop talking to the so-called experts and go to the real experts who are there on the ground, Border Patrol, ICE, all of the law enforcement there and say, what works? And back a couple of months ago when I went down to Yuma, they were telling me what works and it got taken away by this administration, the systems that they had. Okay? And then secondly, we have to encourage the new administration to go back to the former administration's uh, policies. Okay, I, I couldn't believe it. Friday, I don't know if you saw, but on firing line, Fareed Zach Zakaria from CNN was actually saying, yeah, Biden needs to go back to the Trump policies. And I said, holy smokes, he said that. I don't know if he's going to make it home alive, but, 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 <laughs> but, but, but he told the truth. We got to get back to those policies. You, you, you remain in your country to apply for asylum because they're gaming the system now. 
All right? so these are simple policies that, that can stem the flow. Right now, uh, it used to be in the 80s when they'd come across the border, they'd run. Now they, they come across the border and wait there for the law enforcement yeah. to come. Yeah. Big and, difference. And then they, they give them a scripted line and bam, uh, they are set free into the United States. That has to stop. That 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 is a very very simple thing to stop all of this. Tie tie like, the tie, sorry, does they tie the border in with entire immigration reform and restructuring? What okay. would your plan be? For, uh, so we'd start off with that asylum. Say no, nope, none of y'all are getting asylum. Go back, uh, and uh, you're going to have to apply in your own country, or you can remain in Mexico if you like. So that's number one. Number two, those who are over here now, I'm sorry, but uh, we're going to have to find you and uh, uh, gently escort you out of the country because we have millions of others who came the right way, and, we don't, and we're not going to let you jump the line. If we let you jump the line, then we've lost faith in those who are, are going according to the law. But what uh, Senator Langford tried to approach the overall immigration plan. Mm. What was your view of the proposal that he had, he had presented? Please remind me exactly. Sent what Ang, uh, uh, Langford, the uh, that did the bipartisan uh, oh. border that was yes. shot down uh, first by the House, and then uh, yes, and, you know, letting in only you know five thousand at a time. No, again, that is letting people cut the line, and uh, all of us have probably been at amusement parks uh, waiting a long time to get on a on the best ride, and if some snot nosed kid cuts the line. You want to choke them out. We, 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 we're not going to let that happen. Well, I don't think his was allowing people to jump the line. They were taking some uh, some organic moves that would modify uh, our immigration policy in total, but also specifically looking at the border. Well, uh, again, I, I think it needs to go back to the basics. Uh, if you want to come here, here are the procedures. And if you don't want to do those procedures, uh, then sorry, you can't have it. Uh, uh, we have procedures when we go to DMV. We have procedures for everything. But one of the problems with that, and I'm not ad, I'm not supporting or becoming a defender of the of the policy, mm -hmm. is it takes so long after you apply before your case is even heard. We're talking about seven to ten or twelve years. That's how long it took for my parents as well, mm -hmm. and uh, and that can be improved. That that can be improved. Uh, uh, but the thing is. We're not going to improve it by letting people come in here and jump the line. It actually extends it. Yeah. There are people now who are waiting uh, even longer because all of these illegals are in front of them. Yeah. John? I, the southern border issue is, well, it's, it, I'm not being interviewed. I'm supposed to be interviewing here. But it, it's just so broken and so out of control now. It seems it's going to take two years just to fix what's been broken to get to the oh, point yes. where we stop the leaking. The, the, right? yeah, the horses have left the barn. Right. So we, I just drew a blank. Right. This doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Let's move on to, to a couple of uh, looming cliffs uh, that uh, recently got a reprieve because it got set back by a year or two, and that is Social Security and uh, Medicare. And until we oh, do a, some type of holistic, comprehensive fix on this, uh, we can't have... Uh, what used to be uh, 12 people supporting one retiree and soon will be two people supporting one retiree and expect this system to stay intact. Yeah, we have, uh, what we call the unfunded uh, third uh, social... Policy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> third realm. We, uh, holy smokes, it's taking up a, 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 a big portion of our of our national treasure and we it's not something that we can just stop okay but but we need to get people who actuaries people who actually know what they're doing because uh, it used to be our our lifespan was only into the late 60s early 70s but people are living longer now and and, and this system cannot handle it but everyone keeps kicking that can down the road because they say ah, i'll be out of office or i'll be dead by that time and i said no we can't we can't set up our children and grandchildren this way so it has to be revamped but it's going to take smart people much smarter than i am especially with finance and how we do these things there, there are certain uh the way our uh treasury does their books is it way different than most CPAs do their books? And we have to figure out, okay, 
is is this is this real? Your projections are these real, or are they, or are they not? And we have to bring everybody to a come to Jesus and say, well, let's we got to do something about it. But do the politicians have the courage to do that? <laughs> uh, Social Security and Medicare are truly the third rail of politics. Oh, yes. That if you touch it, you're going to lose. You will not not be reelected. And uh, so you mentioned kicking the can down the road. It's not Just making so, it worse. Yeah, it's uh, it's making it worse. But the fact that no one has the courage to stand up and they're going to take it head on. And I think that they're assuming that the only way to fix it is to is to hurt it. And there are smart people out there whom I am sure can come up with uh, some solutions. And if we get just a few people, brave people putting those ideas forward, I think we can start to inch it forward. Well, it's a math problem, so it yes. can be solved with math. Unfortunately, it's also an emotional problem, yes. which overrides the math. And, and the, party, the party that brings up a, sol a solution first is going to get crushed by the other party, and that's why nobody will touch this, because they're waiting for somebody else to go first. We saw this in the early stages of the Republican primary, and I've forgotten who there were, but a couple of the candidates had proposed that idea. We have to address it seriously. And they were there's so much pushback, they pulled back. They did not say anything. That's a lack of courage. Yeah. Lack of courage, exactly right. General, yeah. final minute is yours. Go oh, ahead and campaign. Uh, so I want to say that uh, if uh, if the West Virginians honor me by having me win this primary tomorrow, I plan on having regular scheduled town halls throughout the counties and the district, even before November. And if I win again in November, I, I'm going to continue to have town halls because I want them to know that I'm representing them and I'm a leader who can represent them. As I've said before, uh, any of you who know anybody in the West Virginia National Guard, Air National Guard or Army National Guard, ask them if, if you should vote for me. If they say no, then don't vote for me. But they're going to tell you that I am a person who has an open door policy and I always take care of my people. It's so not every day we get a general and an admiral on the show at the same time. That's right. And that enjoy speaking with each other. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> Good luck to you tomorrow, sir. Thank you. Ever so kind. And I'm going to take one of these brownies. Take a couple. <laughs> take, 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 take one for your staff, too. Yeah, we got, we got a few to spare.